this session uh, we are going to understand the uh, newish concept we have in snowflake data warehouse which is dynamic tables okay let me begin with a with a brief description of dynamic tables and then we will go inside of it uh, what it means okay so very basically the dynamic tables are the building blocks of declarative data transformation pipelines okay so what it means is that the data dynamic tables are used to create data transformation pipelines uh, where we can transform the data we can join the data we can look the data and all sort of things sort of things we can do with that okay and now uh before actually going into the dynamic tables we have to understand so this is what we have been already doing if you are uh, aware of streams and tasks uh so streams are actually some object so it is a schema level object which exists in snowflake data warehouse and they can be associated to a table or a view now once we associated a stream object with a table or a view uh, then all the changes which have happened at the table or to the base table or the of the view they get uh, uh they get uh, stored over here in this so we have two types of stream object one is standard stream object and one is insert only okay so if you want to uh, if you want to uh, note down all the type of changes which have happened to the table uh, can be insert can be update can be deletes then we should use the standard uh standard stream but if you just want to insert the records into stream uh, it could be a streaming data let's say there is a there is a um, some signal data coming from a source and you just want to insert the data into your data into your target table in that case if you just need to insert the data then you will you can use the insert only streams okay so once you have the data in your stream then you can use that changed data or the change data capture which is cdc in your target table okay and now uh one more thing which we have to remember we have set up a stream object which takes the changes which notes down the changes which have happened to the table but we need to schedule the stream as well so to stream schedule anything within snowflake data warehouse either it is a stream either is it, it is a copy into command either it is a stored procedure or it could be function if you want to automate anything if you want to schedule something in snowflake data warehouse we have got something called as task okay so in the task i will tell them i want to copy the data from a stream into the target table okay so i can give multiple uh options uh when i want this particular task to run what i want this task to run so here the task will let's say it will get copy the data from my stream into the target table and my stream will run and then everything will happen okay so this task and stream are used uh, very very frequently together in this snowflake data warehouse okay now uh, it becomes very difficult to track all the different tasks let's say i i i call some some kind of some procedure in this task and then again i have one more task let's say i call this task one and this task one once it ta this task finishes this task then calls for and uh, then calls a uh, task two uh, then finally once the task two completes it calls another task okay so there could be a very long list of tasks which are getting created we have a lot of streams the input for this stream is this this stream and we have to create a lot of tables and then one problem here what happens is that i will end up creating a lot of streams and tasks as you can see here then we will have one more task over here which will contain another stream stream so this task 3 will be this one and then i will have one more stream so it could be it could be stream 3 this is stream 2 and finally this is stream 1 okay. so here you can see that there is a lot of dependency which has been created between streams and tasks so this is a one kind of data pipeline which we have created in this snowflake data warehouse and finally let's say there is a table which gets created in the end so they this is the target table so i can say tgt underscore table which is actually the final table which is being populated once all the pipeline completes right so this is how let's say uh, this is how the pipeline is running okay now one thing which which becomes very clear over here is that uh this is could become even complicated even more complicated and the problem here with the uh, task is that we cannot kind of we cannot manage them very nicely the tasks are not very easily managed we cannot maintain them we cannot see what is happening and so on and we have to create a lot of dependencies between the streams and tasks okay so what snowflake data warehouse 
has said is that instead of creating all of this i will create something called as dynamic table okay so now what i will do instead of instead of creating so many tasks and stream i will create a dynamic table and the dynamic table will consist of the sql query or the final sql query as uh, final sql query in which i will mention what all columns i want from my source tables okay uh, okay so over here instead of creating multiple streams and then taking the data and then putting it on, into a target table and then then fetching fetching that table data into another task and so on i will just write one final sql query the output which i want from my multiple source systems okay so now a dynamic table over here materializes the result of this query that we have specified okay instead of creating multiple target tables and update the data in that table we just define one table okay so this is the advantage of this one so over here we do not even have to specify the refresh structure so uh, so let's say um, the data is coming from here instead of creating so many streams and tasks i just define a final sql query on this table so what i want to do with this table okay so let's say i was uh i was editing some column then i was calculating another column and then i was creating a new column so these are the things i was doing in streams and tasks. but now over here i will create a new column i can i can change the data type i can do the manipulation and everything i will define in my dynamic table final query okay and then with this with the final query in my dynamic table i also have to mention something called as refreshes okay? so refreshes is a property of a dynamic table which tells me how often or how latest data you want in your dynamic table if you say that you want every five minutes the new data to be created or to be materialized from here then you will say that refresh schedule should be five minutes it is similar to your task in the task as well we used to tell that okay i want my schedule to run every five minutes this will run after that after five minutes and this will run after that so similarly we say that this is the final query i want this result to be materialized after every five minutes or after every 10 minutes so this is the refresh schedule which will keep on bringing the latest data into our time but one thing we have to remember over here because the dynamic table is being populated by the snowflake data warehouse the final sql query will be based on will be bringing the data from this table so that is why the contents of the dynamic table is fully determined by this query the contents of this table the dynamic table cannot be changed using dml statements means that we cannot insert update or delete the rows into a dynamic table Okay. So all the inserts, all the updates or all the deletes which happen in the dynamic table will have to happen from the this query okay, or based on the refresh schedule. Okay, so now uh, let us look into the Snowflake data warehouse and that how the uh, we will compare this streams and task with the dynamic table. So we will understand how the how everything has been simplified and how we can create a dynamic table. Okay, okay. So now uh, let us first of all see uh, how we can how we used to create our uh, tasks and the uh, all these things okay okay the streams and tasks okay so first of all uh let us create a let us create a table so we are saying that create or replace a table the table name is raw and it is having one column uh name is where and it's a called data type is variant because we are not specifying the schema the database and schema for this table so that is why whichever database and schema has been selected over here this table will be created over here okay? so let's say if i want to create it in the db demo and then sch demo now the table will get this raw table will get created into database db demo and schema sch demo okay so let's create this table okay so this table is created now so the table is successful and now let us do one thing let us create a stream on this table okay so this is what we want so we are seeing that create or replace a stream object if we do not specify what type of stream it is then it is a standard stream so all the type of changes which we have on this table will get captured into this so the stream name is raw stream one and again this stream will get created into this database and scheme and we want this stream to be associated to this step so let's create the stream okay so the stream is also created and then finally we will have we will create one more table okay so this table we can use to populate from this stream okay, okay. so now uh let's let's create this table as well so create or replace a table the table name is names it has first column id which is integer first name as string and last name as a string okay and then what i want to do is that i want to let's let's create this table again and then finally what i want is that we have a stream now we have we want to define a task so what i will say is that create or replace a task so i'm creating a task now the name of the task is row to name and the warehouse which i want to use is my warehouse so i can i can give any warehouse so right now i have only one 
warehouse so i'll give the name uh, so i'll say key compute underscore warehouse okay so this is the warehouse which i want to use i am saying that this task will run after every one and then when this task has to run whenever this condition is true whenever my stream has any input data or meaning whenever there is any change or when he, whenever there is any insert update or delete on this raw table this task should run every minute okay so this is how we can create it and then on top of that what i want is that i want to merge these records into my target table i am saying that i want to merge the data into the names table which we created later on we are saying that i want these columns when there is a match if the id is already there and the metadata is delete then i want that record to be deleted in my target table whereas when the id is there but the action is insert then i want to insert the record if the id does not match if it means that it it is an it is a new record because the id which is coming from the stream is not already in the name table so that is why it is saying when the data is not matched but the metadata action is inserted the metadata action column is coming from stream okay so this is an additional column which is created inside of stream. and then i am inserting the value and finally all these values are created so all these commands are for the task okay so all these things i have to specify now let us so you can see that i had to write a long script for my for my uh, streams I, I had to define the task i had to define multiple tables in between so i had to define uh, this 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 table which is again a stream table it is going to store some data and then i had to create one more target table which is row to names and then i had to define a lot of uh, logics let us see how we can do it using dynamic table so how we can create a dynamic table so we will say create or replace a table so this is a table which i so this is a source table so this is something which i have already been created so this is the table on which i want to create a dynamic table so when i want to create a dynamic table i will just say create or replace a dynamic table this is the name of the table names and then i will define the lag okay? so this is the lag which we have been talking about this is the refresh table okay? so i want this dynamic table to be refreshed on every minute and then the warehouse which has to be used so i'll say compute underscore warehouse and then finally i will give the query so here you can see that i am directly taking the data from my raw table i do not have to specify any intermediate table i do not need any streams to be created i can say that i want the id column from my raw table i want the first name as first name and i want the last as last name from the from the source table i do not have to create any stream at all I do not have to create any task at all. And this is this, this is just like this. I just, I am saving a lot of space. Okay. Uh, this table was already there. So I'll just, just create the dynamic table. So here you can see that how simply we can define a schedule. Okay. Uh, these tables are already there. So, okay. I'll create something dt underscore name. Okay. So what, uh, how you have seen that, how easy it is to create a dynamic table. We do not have to create any intermediate table. We do not have to create any streams. We do not have to create any tasks. We just have to define a query from the source table and we just have to define that. Okay. Unnecessarily, we do not need all these things. So here you can very well imagine that instead of creating so many complex objects, we just create one table. We define one query inside of it and then we will just, uh, we will just write that query and we'll provide the schedule on which we want it to be refreshed. Okay. So here you can get the idea how our evolution this is in this snowflake data warehouse okay so before that we have to understand some of the some of the scenarios where you would like to use the dynamic tables okay so first scenario is if you do not want to write the code to track the data dependencies and manage data refreshes so here you can see that every time for each task you will have to specify a schedule if you do not want to go into these details if you do not uh, want to create so many tasks you do not want to create so many shared streams you do not want to create so many data refreshes and you do not want, want to manage it whereas you want snowflake data warehouse to manage all the shared refreshes on its own then you should go with the dynamic tables and uh if you do not again if you do not want to materialize the results based on multiple base tables you do not want to create a lot of additional tables and you just want one table uh, where you want everything to be done that is how on that say that case you can go with the dynamic tables okay okay so before uh, that uh, let us understand a bit more about the um, uh, 
okay one second so so these are the few things uh we have taken from the documentation very important things which we would like to discuss now okay so here we can see that what are all the use cases where we want to use the dynamic table so if you do not want to write the code to track the data dependencies and manage data refresh so in here what we can see is that over here we do not have to specify anything apart from when i want this table to be updated you do not need or want to avoid the complexity of stream data tasks if you do not want to create so many streams if you do not want to create so many tasks we are good with one dynamic table you do not need to materialize the results of query of multiple base tables you do not need to build multiple tables to transform the data via an etl pipeline you do not need fine grained refresh schedule control and you just want to specify the target table refreshness of your pipeline okay and then one more thing which we have to remember we sh uh, we can uh, we should go with dynamic tables if you do not need to use unsupported dynamic table query constructs such as stored procedures non determined finished function not listed in snowflake supported non determined function in full refresh or external functions so we should have um, we we cannot so here you can see that we cannot have stored procedures we cannot have non determined function when we are using the dynamic tables okay so if you want to call a stored procedure from your stream as a task then you should go with stream as task instead of calling the dynamic tables okay now there are two types of refreshes which we have in the dynamic tables so the dynamic tables uh, operates in one of the two ways so first is the incremental refresh so we are talking about these refreshes okay so incremental refresh says that the automated process analyzes the dynamic tables query and calculates the changes since the last refresh okay so what incremental refresh will do let's say uh, this refresh is defined for 10 minutes okay? so what it will do first of all uh, so first of all it will have to do a full refresh so what full refresh will do it will bring all the associated data for this sql query into this uh, dynamic table so after and then after every 10 minutes the the incremental refresh will run which will bring all only the data which has been changed in the last 10 minutes. So here we have full refresh which happens when the data is being loaded for the very first time and then we have the incremental refresh when the data will get ref will get pulled only for the, that specific time which has been specified during the refreshes. And then we finally have to understand the target lag. So the lag is also very important. Okay. So this is the same thing. Okay. So refreshes is also defined as the target lag. So this target lag is specified in one of the two the measure of freshness so the measure of freshness sees that how long or after how many minutes how many seconds or how many days you want to pull the data from your sql query from your base table right so this is your measure of freshness so here you can specify the target lag to be 10 minutes to be 15 minutes to be one day uh, to be 10 day to be 365 days just in case if you want to refresh the data on once in a year so this is parameter you can define whereas the second thing which you can define for a target Target lag is downstream. So it specifies that the dynamic table should be refreshed on demand when other dynamic tables that depends on it need to be refreshed. Okay. So what it means is that let's say I have a dynamic table dt1 and then I have a dynamic table dt2. So what I will say is that I will not I will say this dt2 table let's say this dt2 table is dependent on dynamic table 1 right. So uh, so this is the dependency between them. Okay. So now what we are saying is that I am not going to define any any freshness for dt1 but i will say the freshness over here for dt1 to be downstream when i say the downstream and for let's say dt2 i have set it up to be 15 minutes then then what it means that dt1 should be updated or should be refreshed whenever the downstream table which is dependent on it needs to be refreshed so now what it will do is that my dt1 should be refreshed before 15 minutes okay before on the 15th minute my dt2 wants the data from dt1 so my dt1 should get refreshed before 15 minutes it could be 13 minutes it could be 10 minutes so we are i mean we cannot say for sure when snowflake data warehouse is going to refresh the data into dt1 but we are sure that by 15th minute this data should be available the recent data should be available in dt1 to be inserted into dt2 okay so these are very nice construct and then before leaving i should i would like you to show the standard definition of a dynamic table of how you can define it so here you can see that i can also have the uh, select query so i'll say that create or replace a dynamic table this is the name of the dynamic table the target like is 20 minutes so i want this 
dynamic table to be refreshed every 20 minutes this is the warehouse i want the refresh mode to be automatic and then i want the initial i want it to be initialized when i create so as soon as i create my table it should get initialized with the data from the as after as i can give the sql query which is going to provide the data for my dynamic tables okay i hope you have enjoyed this session and you have got some good details about the dynamic tables uh, please let us know if you like this and if you like would like to see some more short videos on these conflict data warehouse thank you so much have a good day